Jack Benny was an iconic radio personality whose career included acting, music, and comedy. This legend was larger than life, which left many fans wondering what Jack Benny was really like when he wasn't performing. Luckily, he had a very close relationship with his daughter, Joan, who shared some eye-opening details in a recent interview. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see some of the many historical icons that Jack Benny befriended throughout his career. Facts First presents Jack Benny's daughter shares secrets behind his career. If you're a fan of Jack Benny, show us by clicking the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Jack Benny, Benjamin Kubaleski, born on February 14, 1894, was a multi-talented entertainer. Not only did he play the violin exceptionally well, he also had an impressive, long-lasting career in television, film, and radio. He's best known for his comedy and unique ability to make viewers laugh with a single word or pause. His impact on the entertainment industry was immense. Not only were his television and radio programs a major success from inception in 1932 until his passing in 1974, his lasting impression on sitcoms helped to shape TV today. Before we get into his secrets for success revealed by his daughter Joan, let's take an in-depth look at his career, childhood, early years, and path to stardom. Jack Benny was born in Chicago, Illinois, the son of Jewish immigrants. He began studying the violin at age six. His parents aspired for him to become a professional violin player. While he adored the instrument, he disliked practicing. Jack's music teacher, Otto Graham Sr., was the father of NFL Hall of Famer Otto Graham. By the age of 14, Jack was performing in his high school's orchestra and dance bands. He loved the arts, but strongly disliked academics. He was expelled from his high school. During business school, his performance was poor, and he attempted to join his father in work. Ultimately, he ended up playing violin at theaters for $7.50 a week. Today, this amounts to about $200. He found himself playing at the same theater as the Marx Brothers. The Marx Brothers' mother, Minnie, thought Jack was a talented violin player and invited him to play alongside her sons. When Jack's parents found out, they refused. They didn't want their son to join the brothers on tour at only 17 years old. However, Jack developed a long-standing friendship with the brothers, Zeppo Marx in particular. This helped him advance in the industry. Jack even formed a duo with Cora Salisbury, a pianist. Violinist Jan Kubelek was angered that Jack had a similar name at the time. With a threat of legal repercussion, Jack changed his name to Ben K. Benny. After Salisbury left the duet, Lyman Woods joined him. After five years of working together, they began incorporating comedy into their performances. They landed the Palace Theater, known as the Mecca of Vaudeville. Vaudeville is a theatrical genre of entertainment that originated in France. This genre of entertainment was extremely popular in the U.S. and Canada during the late 1870s until the 1930s. After their poor performance, Jack left his onstage career to join the Navy during World War II in 1917. He began entertaining fellow soldiers with violin compositions. Following his time in the Navy, he decided to continue performing under under the name Ben K. Benny. Once again, an angry entertainer, Ben Burney, urged him to change his name. Once Jack received legal pressure to alter his name yet again, he decided to adopt the name Jack and officially became Jack Benny. Jack's career was taking off by the late 1920s. He performed with Sadie Marks, radio comedian and actress who used the name Mary Livingstone. The pair married in 1927. After signing a five-year contract with MGM, Jack received his own radio show. The 1932 show was entitled The Jack Benny Program. He created an impressive sitcom within a sitcom. He portrayed a self-serving, mean, bad-tempered version of himself for comedy. His team consisted of great actors, comedians, and a singer. This includes Rochester Van Jones, Mary Livingstone, Don Wilson, Dennis Day, Gene McNutley, Mel Blanc, and Phil Harris. Each person had a unique role in the show. Many people have applauded the radio show for its longevity. Lasting from 1932 to 1955, the Jack Benny program was a major success, with both NBC and CBS picking it up. Furthermore, the radio show transitioned to television, where it was wildly successful. On television, the program aired from 1950 to 1965, overlapping with the radio program for five years. In 1934, Jack and his wife Mary adopted Joan, their daughter. In the Sunday Nights at Seven biography, there's a special passage about Jack's bond with Joan. Jack noted, Mary and I decided to adopt a daughter. He noted that Joan was only two weeks old when they saw her. He described her as skinny with baby wrinkles all over and bright blue eyes. He commented on how pronounced her vocal cords were even as a baby. Initially, he was unsure if this was the baby they should adopt. However, his wife Mary assured him she was the perfect one. Mary said she simply loved her. Jack said he quickly fell in love with her on the second day. 
He said Joan completed their lives. Jack said he was the easygoing parent, while Mary was stricter. At one point, Mary was so tough that seven-year-old Joan said she hated her mother. However, Jack quickly had a talk with Joan to help her understand. Jack told his daughter the story of when they first saw her. He explained how he thought she wasn't the cutest baby, and it was her mother, Mary, who instantly loved her so much. Jack explained the rules Joan had to abide by were for her own good, and in time, she would understand. A few days after Jack had his heart-to-heart with his daughter, she proclaimed, Daddy, I love you very much, out of the blue. He responded by telling her she would never love him as much as he loves her. Even though she was only seven at the time, she responded by saying she did indeed love him more because she loved him the first day they met and he loved her on the second. That beautiful story was included in the couple's biography. In an exclusive interview with Joan Benny, she details all of the memories of her father and the iconic man who told everyone he was 39 for decades. When Joan initially thinks of her father, she remembers his radio show instead of his television show. She preferred the radio show over the TV show. She thought the radio show was extremely funny and entertaining. She heard the old radio tapes as an adult after only hearing bits and pieces vaguely as a child. She quickly realized how creative and funny they were. When asked about her father, among other iconic comedians being left out from modern-day media, she said, time marches on. Joan recalls her experience with vaudeville as a child. She was too young to understand its significance. She recalls the way her father and his friends would talk about it. They loved it. Many people are simply unaware of the impact and prevalence vaudeville had at the time. When asked about their relationship as father and daughter, Joan immediately proclaimed how fond she was of him. She said, I absolutely adored him. She often told people he was the nicest man ever. Anyone who knew Jack Benny would describe him as a kind man. According to a friend of his, Abby Lane, Jack was truly a rare gem. Lane said all the other comedians she worked with were completely insane, and her father was truly the best. Joan comments that her father was unlike all others due to his rigorous show schedule. At most times, his number one priority had to be the show. She enjoyed her relationship with her father. Joan's mother was less social and didn't like to go out as much. This meant Jack and Joan spent a lot of time together. They would go to baseball games and travel different cities together. Joan says her father was an excellent grandfather to her children. Her first son, Mike, was adored by the comedian. Jack would visit his daughter and his grandchildren a few times a week, stopping by for a cup of coffee and a chat. When asked how down-to-earth and grounded he was considering the fame and success, Joan said he remained unaffected by the stardom. She remembers a magazine article published in 1938 confirming her father was the most recognized American American voice. Someone once told Joan that in New York City, prior to air conditioning, her father could be heard on the street coming from the open windows above. When asked about his wide appeal from vaudeville to radio, Joan said people identified well with him. She believes the audience knew even under his cheap character he was a very kind person and only played that part for shows. In other words, Joan believes his strong, respectful, kind, and endearing persona shined through and pleased the public. Joan said her father's public persona was on par with his true character. People thought he was a gentle man, and he was. They thought he loved his fans, and he did. She said her father almost never lost his temper. She described him as happy-go-lucky. He loved his fans, meeting them, and signing autographs. When Jack visited the Caribbean, they were unaware of his career and fame. He only spent three days there before flying home due to feeling out of place. He really enjoyed being famous and receiving recognition. During the 1930s and 40s, black actors were still treated unfairly. Minstrel shows were allowed on air, and no one thought twice about them during that time. Joan made it clear her father had no racial prejudices or judgment. She said their religion was talent. Regardless of someone's background, ethnicity, religion, or race, Jack treated them equally. All that mattered was talent. As long as a person was talented, Jack would willingly work with them. Jack's co-star, Eddie Anderson, was a perfect example of this. Anderson played his role very well and had a positive working relationship with Benny. When asked whether or not maintaining the character was difficult for him, Joan said he did so without issue. She added that many performers simply get burnt out after consecutive years. According to her, he was happy to continue on with his character. His character helped make his radio to television transition smooth. There were countless radio shows of that era with difficulty transitioning into TV. However, not the Jack Benny program. The process was seamless and successful, lasting an additional 15 years on TV. When asked about the joint biography of her mother and father, Joan explained the publishing process. Once her mother passed, she read the book, but it was incomplete. Years later, when her father passed, Warner Books offered her a book deal. She felt it would be difficult to write only about her father. Instead, she finished the autobiography begun by her parents. She merged her perspective with the autobiography. The book is structured with one chapter from her, one chapter from him, and so on and so forth. The autobiography is entitled Sunday Nights at Seven. When asked about the friendship between her father and George Burns, she said her father and him were joined at the hip. Jack Benny and George Burns were best friends. George had the ability to keep Jack laughing for hours. The two comedians respected and adored one another. Their relationship began during vaudeville times. 
At the time, Jack was a bigger star than George. During their phone calls, the telephone would go dead mid-conversation. The telephones of the 30s, 40s, and 50s were not the same as today. For some reason, Jack thought George hung up on him. In an effort to be funny, Jack called him back after the mishap. George said if Jack found that situation humorous, it was good with him, and he looked forward to doing it again. So hanging up mid-conversation became a tradition for the pair. They would play these fun games with each other. On a separate occasion at the Hillcrest Country Club, George walked in and sat in silence. Jack immediately started laughing. George asked what he was laughing at, noting he did nothing. Jack responded by saying, yes, but you purposely did nothing. This type of comedy and humor amused the two comedians and kept their relationship alive and strong. Joan commented she has countless stories of her father and George. Jack Benny had many celebrity friends over the course of his life. He's been photographed with Fred Allen, Carol Lombard, Judy Garland, Robert Taylor, Barbara Stanwyck, Ann Sheridan, Richard Nixon, Jack Parr, Dinah Shore, Shirley Temple, Jane Wyatt, Phil Silvers, Danny Thomas, and Lucille Ball. We hope you learned something about Jack Benny and his impressive career. Now we'd like to hear from you. How do you remember this icon best? Radio, television, or film? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to Factsverse for more videos like this.